I'm going to let you know now because I will forget later. Uh, no Mac OS can next Monday and probably next Tuesday. Because, uh, you know, there's a holiday this weekend and I'd like to take Monday off. And that means no time to work on a Tuesday show. So the next Mac OS can will probably be next Wednesday. I mean, after this. <laughs> is Mac OS Ken. More good news for iPhone sales. Product Red will keep fighting the COVID fight and working at an Apple store at home. It is Friday, the 2nd of July, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken, brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by Notion. One workspace for your whole team. Get collaborating with $250 off at Notion.so and use promo code MacOSCAN. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through Patreon. Find out more and add your support at patreon.com slash MacOSCAN. More tire tracks for the current iPhone supercycle. I told you Thursday of recent iPhone sales estimates from CounterPoint Research. That firm says sales of the iPhone 12 line crested the 100 million unit mark between five to seven months after release. By CounterPoint's reckoning, the latest line of iPhones beat the iPhone 11 line to the 100 million mark by at least a couple of months. The firm says it is the first iPhone supercycle to come along since iPhone 6, several iPhones ago. Helping to keep the cycle humming are sales of iPhone in China. iLounge has word of more data from CounterPoint. According to that, sales of the iPhone reportedly increased by 16% during the festival shopping season in the country. As a result, the iPhone maker was able to capture 14% of the smartphone market in China during the first three weeks of June. Last time we focused on iPhone and China specifically, iPhone appeared to be bucking a trend. Mid-month last month, a number of analysts, including J.P. Morgan's Sameek Chatterjee, saw sales of iPhone rising in China, while the smartphone market there slumped. Not this time. Smartphone sales grew 7% for the first part of June versus the same period a year ago, according to CounterPoint's numbers. Apple staying with its shifted focus on product red products, Since the start of the line about 14 years ago, a portion of Product Red sales has gone to fighting HIV and AIDS in sub-Saharan Africa. Then the world caught COVID-19, and Apple switched up a bit of the Product Red relief. In April of 2020, the company said funds that normally went to the fight against HIV and AIDS would go to fighting COVID-19. That was originally set to run through the end of September 2020, though... That time period was extended, most recently through the end of June of this year, and now it's been extended again. A piece from Apple Insider has Apple saying that all product red purchases made from the 1st of July to the 30th of December will contribute to the Global Fund's COVID-19 response. While the funds may be hitting a different target, Apple views the fight against COVID-19 as part of the fight against HIV and AIDS. The company says the redirection of donations will provide critical support to health systems most threatened by the COVID-19 outbreak and, in turn, help preserve life-saving HIV and AIDS programs in sub-Saharan Africa. If you wondered where the Mac was in Wednesday's big batch of public betas, turns out it was running a few hours behind. I told you on Thursday that Apple had released the first betas of iOS 15, iPad OS 15, TV OS 15, and Watch OS 8 to members of its public beta program. Now, Engadget says Apple's released the first public beta of Mac OS Monterey just one day later. Public releases of the Apple operating systems are due out in the fall. The back and forth between who works where for Apple has taken an interesting turn iDownload blog highlights a Bloomberg report that has the Cupertino company testing a hybrid flex work-from-home option for Apple Store employees. 
At first blush, that sounds kind of weird. Don't you need to be in an Apple store to work at an Apple store? Then again, maybe not. I have a few friends who work for Apple Retail. At the height of store closures, one of them told me about shifts being pulled from the comfort of the couch. Additionally, just because more people can go more places doesn't mean they're all going to want to. Shoppers choosing to shop from home, workers who want to keep working from home, suddenly a plan starts to form. According to Bloomberg, creating such a program is an acknowledgement that the trend of greater online shopping accelerated by COVID-19 may continue despite economic reopenings and vaccine availability in more parts of the world. Workers will move between their store and remote roles, depending on demand in stores, versus online shopping during a particular period, sources said. What's being discussed is a pilot program. Folks who participate are being asked to do so for at least six months. Apple is planning to ramp up the arrangements from September to December, according to Bloomberg, when the company is scheduled to release several new iPhones, iPads, Macs, Apple Watches, and AirPods. Plus, I hear that's when they're having Christmas this year. So cool. More news in a moment, but first a word from Notion, one workplace for your whole team. Have you set up your Notion accounts yet? You probably got a day off over the next few days. Maybe spend some time seeing how Notion is saving time for companies like yours and helping their teams work together better. Notion is an all-in-one team collaboration software that combines note-taking, document sharing, wikis, project management, and more into one simple, easy-to-use tool. And it folds in a bunch of other tools. With 500 integrated apps, including Google and Slack, Notion doesn't replace the way you work. It brings the tools you use and your team members together. Get to know Notion with a personal account or set up a trial account for your team. Then when you're ready to go all in, do it for less. Notion is currently running a special offer to listeners of the show. Go to notion.so and use promo code macOSCAN to get $250 off its annual team plan. That's multiple months free for your growing team. Don't forget, that's Notion. Dot S-O, enter promo code macOSCAN during checkout. Get collaborating with $250 off at Notion.so and use promo code macOSCAN. Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a law that requires foreign social media companies to open offices in the country. That is according to a piece from the Mac Observer. You may remember an Apple Insider report from a couple of weeks ago. It indicated that major tech companies, including Apple, would probably have to open offices in Russia if the then-proposed legislation became law. While the law is aimed at social media, looks like Apple could be caught up in it. The Mac Observer says the law will apply to companies with a daily audience of at least 500,000 Russians, while the Reuters piece from which they work does not mention Apple by name, it does say that the new law potentially affects 20 companies, including retailers and e-commerce companies. Expect to learn more soon. The legislation requires affected companies to open offices or legal entities in Russia by January of 2022. France may make la vie très difficile pour Apple TV+. Plus. Engadget ran a piece earlier this week saying the Hexagon has a new demand for international video streamers streaming into France. According to the report, the French government has decreed that Netflix, Disney+, Plus, and other streaming services will have to spend up to a quarter of their French revenue on making local content. 80% of the money will go for stuff to stream on their respective services. The other 20% will be used to make theatrically released movies, according to Engadget. Look for more plans like this in the future. The report says France is the first European Union member to enforce new streaming rules under the European Commission's Audiovisual Media Services Directive. 
The framework is designed to create more parity between streaming platforms and other broadcasters and entertainment services across the EU. The Apple Maps crew is on its way for a look around in Austria. Apple Insider cites a report from the German-language news outlet Der Standard, saying dozens of Apple vehicles will begin mapping the streets of Austria for the company's look-around feature starting on the 5th of July. As this year's Pride Month comes to an end, Apple Maps is giving folks a way to support LGBTQ businesses all year long. iMore says Apple has partnered with Intentionalist, an online guide to supporting small businesses and diverse local communities, to add five new guides to Apple Maps that support LGBT businesses. The guides, called Spend with Pride, highlight LGBT-owned businesses in Seattle, New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and London. Laura Cleese, founder and CEO of Intentionalist, is quoted in the piece saying, Whether you're a local or a visitor to a city, it can be hard to find LGBTQ-owned businesses to support. Guides and Apple Maps are another tool to help people quickly discover great places to grab a drink, a bite to eat, or find a small gift while supporting the small businesses at the heart of our communities. A tool, yes, though not the easiest to use. I must have spent about five minutes looking for these particular guides in Apple Maps. The best way to find them, it turns out, go to the search field in Apple Maps and tap in the publisher's name, Intentionalist. Otherwise, you'll be there all day. And finally today, serious move or serious publicity stunt. A piece from the Jerusalem Post says Israeli wallet brand Emmanuel Wallets has stopped accepting digital payment methods like Apple Pay. Why? Because they're hurting the traditional wallet business. In a statement, Emmanuel Wallets said... A digital wallet provides an inferior user experience compared to a handmade leather wallet. Classic wallets have accompanied the human race for centuries and serve as a practical means of maintaining a means of payment and a fashionable accessory. A wallet is the type of an item one holds, such as a phone, so it's part of its unique style and personal branding. No technological gimmick, not even one promoted by the world's largest tech company, will succeed in reducing the popularity of a physical wallet. So what are you worried about then? Also quoted in the story, Dan Gutleiser, Emmanuel Wallet's VP of Global Marketing, who said, We call on leading wallet manufacturers from around the world to join the initiative and refuse to accept payment through Apple Pay, a new player claiming to bite a market share in a centuries-old industry based on quality raw materials, elite sewing, knowledge, and tradition. I think this is a publicity stunt, though on the off chance it isn't. Here's an idea. Leather cases for phones, tablets, and computers based on quality raw materials, elite sewing, knowledge, and tradition. Or, you know, keep yelling at that cloud. Mac OS Ken, brought to you by me and sponsored by Notion, one workspace for your whole team. Get collaborating with $250 off at notion.so and use promo code Mac OS Ken. This show is also supported by people like you, patrons through patreon find out more and that your support at patreon.com slash mac os can advertising handled by backbeat media online at backbeatmedia.com you can reach me a couple of ways info at mac os can.com or call 716-780-4080 People here in the States, have a safe and sane 4th of July. Until next time, that is news from Mac OS Ken. I'm Ken Ray.
Ciao.